Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. This is Moto Tech. Today, we're going to put a Lightning node on the Raspberry Pi. So the Bitcoin Lightning node is a layer two protocol on top of the Bitcoin network. We all know that Bitcoin is the most OG blockchain out there. While it brought us a lot of benefits, at the same time, it also has some downsides. And one of them is that it can only support about seven transactions per second. And the transaction fee is also kind of high. In this chart, we can see that comparing to some of the other payment networks, such as Visa, which can support 24,000 transactions per second, or some of the other blockchains, for example, Polygon and Solana, which can support more than 60,000 transactions per second. You know, it's kind of embarrassing to see a three to seven transactions per second for Bitcoin blockchain. However, with the Lightning Network, we can now support millions of transactions per second. At the same time, the transaction fee is extremely low. And we're talking about a few Satoshis here. And in US dollars, that's almost zero. So I can't tell you why you want to set up a Lightning node, but I can certainly tell you why I decided to start one. But before we start, I am Moto Tech. I'm here to help you understand the technical fundamentals of blockchain and Web3. At the same time, I help you gain hands-on experience so you can become an early adopter. If this sounds like you, go ahead and give that thumbs up and click that subscribe button. This will help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, so why do I want to start one? Number one, I really like Raspberry Pi projects, and this one is super easy to set up. Number two, it's very fun to maintain a Lightning node. There's a lot of research goes into it. The more you read, the more you learn. You can test out different things. You're basically building your own bank routing system. And with a lot of work and knowledge, you will be able to put your node on top of the list. That being said, this is not a get rich quick project. In fact, some people can't even make enough money to break even with the electricity cost of a Raspberry Pi in a year, which is maybe about $5. And number three, in order to run a Lightning node, you need to have a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain. And that means you are verifying transactions and that you will be helping securing the blockchain and help building the decentralization network. And the next reason is that the co-founder of Twitter and Square, which is now called Block, Jack Dorsey, he introduced Web5. And the reason we're skipping Web4 is because he essentially says, we're going to take the best of Web2 and the best of Web3, and we're going to add them together. So 2 plus 3 equals 5. And he thinks that to solve the problems that Web2 and Web3 have, we need a real decentralized network. As we see that a lot of Web3 projects these days are just Web2 companies running a blockchain and advertising as Web3. We really need a real decentralized blockchain, which brings us back to Bitcoin. As we know that Bitcoin doesn't support smart contract like Ethereum. However, we can have layer two networks on top of Bitcoin to support smart contracts. And you can't talk about Bitcoin layer two without talking about the Lightning Network. So I'm speculating that there will be a huge adoption of Lightning Network in the future. Actually, there already is. And right now with the Bitcoin price down under $20,000, it is a lot cheaper to get one started. You don't have to have a whole Bitcoin to start. You can just have a few hundred dollars or more ideally a couple of thousand dollars to start a few channels. All right, so material wise, what do you need to get this started? I will have all the parts in the description below. So you will need a Raspberry Pi and ideally a case. And you'll need a Raspberry Pi 4, by the way. And it can be a four or eight gigabytes of RAM. At the same time, you'll need an SD card. I will link an A2 rated SD card in the description below. And these cards have higher read and write speed and they're designed for rapid data transfers. You also need at least a one terabyte SSD. The Bitcoin blockchain is currently about 470 gigabytes. And a one terabyte or even two terabyte will give you some future proof. And of course you can get a USB to SATA cable like this, or you can also have a Docker or a case to host your SSD and plug the other end to the USB 3 on the Raspberry Pi. Oh yeah, and if you don't already have a SD card reader, you will need one because you will have to flash an image onto the SD card. Once you have all the parts, you will need to go to umbro.com and this is what we're gonna use to host our nodes. And umbro.com is actually a self-hosting service, it's completely free. 
You can run your own home servers and including a bunch of nodes on there. And the fun fact is that the data coming from 2021, more than 90% of the Lightning node actually runs on Umbro. You're actually running it locally. You're just using their image. You can use a Raspberry Pi and at the same time, if you choose to, you can use anything that runs Debian and Ubuntu. So if you're using a Raspberry Pi, next step is just to click on the install on a Raspberry Pi 4, which will bring you all the way down to the instructions and the click on how to install and this will double check make sure you have all the parts and step two it will ask you to download the Umbra OS and after downloading the OS which is about one gig you also need to download the Belinda Etcher which is the software we're going to use to burn the image onto your SD card. Next, it's time to plug in your SD card into your card reader and plug your card reader into your computer. Open up this Belinda Etcher software and click flash find the OS and then choose the SD card I'm using a 128 gigabytes. You don't have to, all you need is a 32. And depending on your read and write speed, for me, it took about 10 minutes. So here we fast forward. Once that's done, it goes through validating and I decided not to. Here you can now unplug your SD card and then insert the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi. And don't forget to connect your SSD card into your USB slot on the Raspberry Pi. So from here, Connect your Raspberry Pi to your router, preferably by Ethernet, and that's what I'm using. Once powered up, you are going to have to wait for about five minutes. You can go straight to umbro.local or straight for the local IP address if you know it, and you'll see starting Umbro. This process takes about five minutes. And once that's done, it will show up, welcome to Umbro. It will ask you to create your account, and then it will bring you to the dashboard. It asks you to install your first app. We want to install Lightning Node. Once you click on that, it will show you that it has a dependency and that's the Bitcoin node. So you're going to have to install that first and you can just click install. And when you go to the setting of Umbro, you can check out how much storage it has used, how much RAM it's used. And I strongly suggest you set up your two-factor authentication and you can also access your node from outside of network through the Tor network. A little bit after you install Bitcoin node, it will start trying to read all the blocks and then it will connect to peers. And most of the time you should be able to connect to 10 peers and it will start downloading the blockchain. And this process takes a lot of patience. For me, it took over 24 hours, actually 26 hours to download the entire blockchain. And that's after I switched to my other device. And my other device is a normal a mini PC. So it has way higher read and write speed. And I did that to do a comparison with Raspberry Pi. They both on Gigabit Fiber. They both had 10 peers. My mini PC node started four hours after this Raspberry Pi node. And by the time I finished syncing, the Raspberry Pi node still had less than 50%. So again, this is what it looks like when it's syncing. So you don't have to wait for the Bitcoin node to fully sync in order to install your Lightning node. Once you install your Lightning node, you can go ahead and install the write the lightning software. And when you click that, it will say, hey, you need to install lightning node. I already installed it. So for you, you have to do that first. And there's a default app password right here you're going to use and you can copy that. And this will be needed for you to log in to your write the lightning software, which is used to manage your lightning node, opening up channels, uh, doing a bunch of routings, and a balance the liquidity and a lot of other features. Also where you'll be getting your 24 secret words and make sure to write that down somewhere. You're gonna need that to recover your wallet. And right now this is what it looks like for my channels and I'm still in the process of balancing my channels which will allow more liquidity flow and that will be a future video. All right guys, there's actually a lot of stuff goes into becoming a successful Lightning Node host. If you're interested in finding out more, please subscribe and stay tuned. This is Mototech. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.